Hey everybody, this is EZ, and welcome to episode 12 of my StarCraft 2 Let's Play. In this episode, we'll be doing the second Protoss mission. Now, we start off here in the laboratory, because that's where we ended off last, but I clicked on the crystal. So I'm going to do things in here first, then I'll go to the other place and then come back here. First thing, we click on the Protoss tank and get another description from Stedman. I've been staring at this anomalous sphere above the crystal. It's obviously an energy emitter, but it has such strong containment that the crystal can slowly draw power from it via some method I don't understand. It gives me an idea. Using our own containment technology, I could modify our SCV manufacturing process to double capacity with no increased risk, I think. Breakthrough. The energy in this crystal is not kept in a vortex pattern. It was warping the energy around so fast that I couldn't detect it. In odd coincidence, the warping slowed just enough for the, my sensors to pick it up. Not sure how or why. Every time I reach my wits, every time I reach my wits, end up with the sample. Something happens by chance, and I get a breakthrough. Is it helping me? Clearly, I've been working on too many hours. I'm going to lose some more credits on my lost Viking. You can click in the research console, and we get two other upgrades we can get. We can get an SCV reactor, which allows us to build two SCVs simultaneously. It's only good early game, but not really that great. The other one is automated refineries. You no longer need SCVs to get gas. It does it automatically. And I'm going to get that because it's so helpful in this. And it also stacks with the microfiltering. So you get gas 25% faster that way, too. We head into the cantina. And we can talk to Tosh first. Good to see you, brother. I've been... Wait. I can see it in your eyes. You've seen into the spirit world. The Protoss. He gave you a crystal. And now you've been seeing what he's seen. That ain't nothing to do with you. Stay out of my head, Tosh. Have it your way. But you want to trade careful when you go looking into the beyond. If you need me, you know where I'll be. Yes, I'll be in a bargain. Drug off my ass. How did you become such good buddies with those freaky Protoss? All I hear is they kill Terrans like you and me on sight. Some of them would. But some others would fight to the death protecting people like us. I helped them defend their homeworld from the Zerg during the first war. When Kerrigan came back leading the swarm, I helped him out again. The real big on loyalty. Damn, Jimmy. Almost sounds like you respect him. I wouldn't expect you to understand, Tychus. Okay, and now for the news. We have a very special guest today, Crown Prince Valerian. Thank you so much for joining us, Highness. Thank you, Kate. It's wonderful to be here. Let me get right to the question on everyone's mind. Is there anyone special in your life right now? Truth be told, Kate, I've had a crush on you for many years. Oh, stop. <laughs> but in all seriousness, with the Zerg invasion, there's little time for such things. I've been studying military tactics under General Warfield, and whatever spare time I have is devoted to statecraft. It's my goal to be the best emperor our people could ask for. When the time comes, of course. Wonderful. Now I've got two of them to worry about. Okay, and now we can head on to the bridge. And talk to Horner. How long was I down in the lab, Matt? You've been gone for hours, sir. You've been in the lab all that time? I used the Eon Crystal Zeratul gave me. I swear it only lasted a few minutes. So vivid. Zeratul's been searching for a Zelnaga prophecy about the end of the universe. There's more. I just haven't got to it yet. Okay, now in the armory. I don't think they need to talk. If you can go into the armory council here, we can. We already got the upgrade for the siege tanks, which are very, very good. And now what we're going to do, if we don't have any credits, we don't earn credits for these missions at all. So we can go back to the laboratory and click on the crystal to start our next mission. Okay. Let's click on this crystal. I gathered allies 
and we made our way to the forbidden archive world of Zaku. There, a triumvirate of mystic preservers awaited us, and in the shadows, something else was watching and waiting. Eerie. All right, Zeratulo, buddy, you got your mysterious prophecy. Now let's see what your preservers made of it. My quest to decipher the prophecy took me to the forbidden archive world of Zakul. Here, three immortal preservers guarded ancient knowledge. Only they could transcribe the prophetic fragments. I needed to seek them out quickly. Okay, folks, this mission is called A Sinister Turn. This mission is not the easiest thing in the world, but it is still considered a training mission for Protoss. It teaches you the basic aspects of a Protoss base, tells you how to build it. There's two ways you can do this mission, and I'll go through both of them. I'm going to do the way that I find easiest, but I will go through both ways. Um, actually, that way I'm not going to do it might be easier, but I'm not sure. Um, as soon as the mission loads, I can go through it in more detail. It is strangely silent here, yet these structures are intact. With power, they would be functional. I really hope we had Zerato for this mission, it'll make it so much better. Okay. What we gotta do is we gotta power up the building. Should build pylons. Put one here. Find it do it their way. Put one there, and then put one there. And go up here. Continue to build some probes. Misclick on my part there. And as you can see, this is just a basic building your base up. Uh, get some defenses out. I'm going to need a second gateway, so I'll drop it down as soon as possible, like right now. I'm going to need at least two gateways. Um, you get a unit in here called... You get zealots and stalkers only in this mission. For the gateway units. But you... The mighty spirits of the preservers are imprisoned close by. We must find them. The units you want more often than not in this mission are Stalkers. And you also get a unit called an Immortal, which I have gone through already in, my, in the Dig walkthrough. Where the guys have the Hardened Shields, reduce all incoming attacks to 10. Because we'll be fighting a re continuous hero in here. That... Continuous, so he just keeps coming back. Um, I will need to use both these gas geysers. I may actually need to expand over to another base. There's a base over here, and there's a base right here. There are many abandoned structures in this place that we can make use of. They merely need their power restored by the construction of a few well-placed pylons. Preservers you seek serve a higher power now, Dark One. And I completely botched that by sending a rally point to uh, follow a probe. Higher power? What could have corrupted these Protoss so? And I will be getting these upgrades. Something foul has taken hold of this sacred place. Gas is very important in this mission because the units you're going to be making are all full of gas. This is the building I need the robotics facility. I will get all three of them, but you need the robotics facility most of all because what it does is it gives you ability to make immortals. And as I've already gone through, immortals will be a crucial and I mean crucial part of this mission. 
I'm popping out two zealots here, even though I said maybe you want any stalkers, but at the beginning, if you don't have the immortals, you do want the, the zealots. and Zerg hybrid. Gods, an abomination. Who created this atrocity? Come, my slaves. The time has come to give me your strength. Okay, that is the main hair that we're going to keep fighting in this mission that will annoy you beyond all recognition in this mission. Because all he does is just straight up attack you. Constantly. And you stop him once, he will send more men to attack you. He does. He, he doesn't usually come with an army. Occasionally, the army will attack as Mar attacks. But he's not really all that bad. He's actually not the hard part of this mission if you know how to beat him. Which, of course, I'm going to show you how to beat him in this mission. This is he does 30 damage for structures, 20 regular. That doesn't change. Changes his health changes, but it does eventually cap out. So there is a point where you can just stop worrying about it, and everything will be fine. I think I actually messed up the building of these structures. I think I built the cannon on the wrong side to start with. Yep, I did. At this point, someone already have um, an immortal out, but I don't, and that could cost me, and I might need to do a save load. Zealots with charge are very good units to have. Mar is actually harder to kill now than he will be later on in the game when he gets more powerful. Just for the reason that um, right now he um, I don't have many units to actually kill him with. And I have just killed him right now. I actually didn't lose the photo. Hybrid is draining the preservers to survive. I must free them before it is too late. Now, what I usually do in this mission, which I didn't do this time, which is good, is I usually go straight to um, the robotics facility right after I kill Mar. But in doing that, I leave my base wide open for an attack. Robotics facility. This structure may prove useful to us. This is what I mean by they attack you relentlessly. He, I just killed him and he's already coming back. I do need to make another cannon right here. You don't need the three cannons. I just do that because it's makes it makes mission so much easier if you have the extra cannons. Um, also, got to make sure you have you don't supply block yourself inside your own base because there is more right there attacking. You need to try to kill him as fast as possible. Mar is not an armored unit, he's a massive biological, which means that the immortals don't do extra damage to him, but they're still good to have because they do a lot of damage anyway. This makes the mission harder. Right here. Not that I have this immortal. My thanks, mighty one. Immortals do take a lot of uh, supply. I think they cost four, if I remember correctly. Your existence ends this day. What does it mean by this is relentless with Mar? Once you start attacking the enemy bases, your base won't get attacked as much, which makes it easier to defend and do everything with. But. It's still not easy <laughs> by any means because Mar will continuously attack you no matter what. And you don't really want that. You don't want Mar to attack you because if he does, it makes the mission so much harder. But if he doesn't, this mission will be too easy and it is brutal mode and it's supposed to be challenging. If it was easy, it would not be brutal. 
Look at that. A couple of shots, these things take him down, take his shield, just drop his shield. That's why I want the immortals. Because I just dropped Mar before he could really kill. He killed one cannon and he didn't kill a single unit. That's why I wanted. That was the main reason. That was the main reason I wanted immortals over. The Zealot, because you can do this with Zealot and Stalkers, also a pretty good combo, because the Zealots have charge and they attack pretty quickly. That's a good combo to do too, but I wanted the Immortals just because of the fact that they do 25 damage versus Mar, and they do s a lot of damage versus Stalkers. Some secrets must remain hidden. And I'm just going to have a big ball of Stalkers and Immortals. That's my army, Stalkers and Immortals. You don't need a bigger R. You don't need any more composition than that. I mean, you could use Zealous, like I said, or also a pretty good choice to use. But you don't have to. I mean, you can do this without it, and I'm choosing to. I built this Robo Facility here, because this one will probably get destroyed later on. I mean, Marsh health should have increased by now. Yeah, it's increased to, th to 2,000 total. Watch how fast Mar goes down with the armor that I have. That lift up does do damage, and it's a real pain tag because he can do it, he does it very often. See, like I said, his attack never goes up. The only thing that changes is his health. You cannot destroy me. I shall rise again. The next is the point. You never truly kill Mar in this mission. You don't. You can't. Now, watch the immortals under a stalker, they just drop dead. Immortals are made to kill armored units, and Stalker is considered an armored unit. The Immortals just drop them. That's why I have the Immortals in here over Zealots. I mean, Zealots would be a really good choice, too. If you use Zealots, you don't get me wrong, you can do this mission, too. For the first few minutes, all you're trying to do is build up an army. Usually, you want about 30 or so mix of Stalkers and, and uh, Immortals to go attack just to get over to here. Then you want to move down to here, and there's an enemy base you can destroy. You want to destroy the other two bases, because if you do, you prevent uh, some attacks from coming to kill you. I don't know about you, but I don't want to get attacked and killed. That would not be fun. And they do have a nasty tendency, which is rather annoying, to um, attack when Mar attacks. And they always attack the side he is not attacking from. It's very rare you'll see a Mar and... Um, Protoss attack from the same side? I thought we killed you! I go together my strength. I th think Mark caps off at 1500 health and 1500 shields, but I'm not positive. We will find out, because I will be doing this whole thing. Um, I do need more pylons. The pro one thing about the Protoss army, the only unit that costs one supply is a probe. Unlike Terran, who can produce Marines who cost one supply, and are good attacking units, even a Zealot costs two supply. I don't know why. There is no I guess it makes the mission slightly harder if you do that. And for right now, I'm not getting hit by many big attacks. Eventually, I will, when Mar gets really strong. And this unit is a Void Ray. I have gone through those before. They do have Void Rays that start out really weak, but the longer they focus on a target, they get stronger. Which is a, it's actually a popular unit in a multiplayer, because, like I said, they start out really weak, but they do get really strong towards the end. The thing about Mar is, he can lift you up while not actually attacking you, not even looking at you. That is a guardian shield right there that the sentry produces. Those things reduce incoming damage by 50%. It's very good to have, and if you play Protoss in multiplayer, you will need to learn how to use those. Um, they can be they can change the tide of battle for you. Like they're good against early pushes and stuff like that when you don't have a proper defense up yet. So I would invest looking into how to use them. Jesus Christ, dude, give me a breather? He's gonna keep trying to kill it! 
You do want Immortals, but you do want more Stalkers than Immortals, because the Immortals are really just there to kill Armored Dunes and be a distraction because of their shield. While the Stalkers are here to kill the Carriers, the, um... Yes, they have Carriers, the Void Rays, and stuff like that. I'm just basically making a Supply Pocket over here. There's no reason to. I'm just doing it to make it a lot easier. Now, if you can intercept Mar before he starts focusing your cannons, it's going to be so fun. Not really fun, but makes it easy. Now this is the attack that's going to kill that uh, robot facility, which is why I built the other one in my base. I will go down and attack it, but I mean, you don't have to, they will attack your base. So it's not necessary to actually do this, but I do it anyway. This attack always comes and they always attack your robot facility, which is the reason why I built the other one in my base. Like I said, I'm not really going to use them. I'm always going to use that one anyway. I need one Robo Facility producing. That's all, that's all you need. So, why overproduce when you don't need to? Your resistance ends this day. No, I don't think it will, Mar. I have a feeling we're going to kick your ass a couple more, a few hundred more times. Let's look at his health now. It's at 1400, 1400. He's very strong. His attack stays the same, like I said. His armor stays the same. And my units do have armor upgrades now, which makes them be able to withstand more damage. Always a plus. And then we'll also get the plasma shield upgrades, because you want all the upgrades you can in this mission. In multiplayer, you don't really necessarily want to get um, plasma shields, because you're going to need to be able to react quickly and macro and micro out. But you don't need to do that here. He must kill my freaking gateways, the bastard. Now that's not attacking with Mar, it's attacking after Mar, so I don't count that as the with Mar attack. I usually lose roughly one unit per attack. But this is not a problem. A dark shrine. Once power is restored, it could be of great value to us. I tend to hide the pylons behind the main building. I'm not going to make any dark templates, I'm getting it mainly for the research uh, points. Could you get research points for this? Some must yes, it does get kind of annoying when um, Mar keeps coming saying that, but eh. We're gonna kill him soon enough anyway. Once you kill the preservers, the mission is over, and Mar stops responding. Which is rather annoying. I got a fairly big army. I'm actually going to walk up and intercept Mar before he can.